So this game that's like Pokemon just got an update a couple days ago and I checked it out. We can adjust the settings to make it so we can only capture enemy trainer Coromon. Coromon all come with one trait and that will be completely random and they will now evolve to a random Coromon of the same type. I think Pikachu evolving into a Zapdos. Also all quest rewards and items we find on the ground will be completely random and one self-imposed rule is no battling wild Pokemon so we can't do any grinding. If we do run into a wild Pokemon we have to run away. After putting on my dress I saved right outside this room where you select your starter Coromon and I checked to see if any of these Coromon were different color which basically indicates they have higher stats. If they were normal color then I would just quit out, load up the game and check their color again, rinse and repeat in the process till we finally find a black Nibblegar which I feel like is kind of problematic because if you just remove some letters from the name. We're now at our first trainer battle and we can check out Nibblegar's abilities. Mighty Roar will lower the attack of the enemy team I think it said which now I think about it may just apply to multiple Coromon that are out in the battlefield but probably not ones that are in the trainer's pocket. So we'll just do a Chomp which is our main damaging ability. It's a pretty low tier ability and only has 40 power and has a 10% chance to make the target bleed. Also Nibblegar has a pretty useless ability. It makes the enemy not able to switch out or escape but enemy trainers usually don't switch anyone out. There is a way to change this passive ability though. I think you have to pay for it at the second town so that's something we'll definitely do. And yeah we'll just keep chomping this thing until it dies. We did crit there which is very good and the swarming actually hits pretty hard. Jeez pretty sure that hit harder than our Nibblegar. Because this Nibblegar is black he gets some advantages that a lighter skin Nibblegar doesn't get. More often we get a boost to his stats. The starting Healy Cakes heal for 20, so we want to make sure that his HP is more than 20. And we'll just put 3 points in HP for now. This guy's next Pokemon is a Ice Pokemon, I believe, which is more effective against Water, which is Nibblegar's type. I don't know if he has any Ice abilities yet. That does not look like that's the case. Starts with the Claw, and we're just going to spam Chomp at him. Which, if his next claw does crit, it will knock out Nibblegar. I don't want to use one of our healing cakes if we don't have to, so we're going to swap out Nibblegar for Potterbit, which is a Pokemon you always start with in this game. And we'll just hit this Blizzbird with probably two slams, I would guess. It's bleeding as well from Nibblegar's attack earlier. And Potterbit's defense lowered, I think, or I'm not sure what that was. This guy's a Juba fruit. Potterbit might end up getting knocked out here, which is completely fine. I would rather have Nibblegar get all the XP. And maybe we'll actually let that be the case. We use feelers, which increase the damage the target takes by 2.5 times, I believe. And yeah, we'll let the powder bait get knocked out. The nibble guard should be able to finish this guy off. I didn't actually know if he was going to attack first, though. And whoa, how does that not finish off Blizzard? We didn't get crit, so we're fine. And we do knock this thing out. And powder bit actually gets XP for that. I did not know knocked out Pokemon actually get XP. From leveling up to 6, Nibblegar gets Bubble Burst, which is a much better ability than Chomp, I would assume. Or never mind, actually, they're the same damage. It is a special type of damage, though, which scales off a of Nibblegar's special attack, whereas Chomp scales off his regular attack. They're both 10, though, so I guess they're going to do the same damage. From the first box we open, we get a 75% off coupon, which is really good. It means whatever we buy will be 75% off. It applies after we buy the stuff, though, so we want to save up quite a bit of money before we use that. Mom gave us 3k to start with and we're going to use most of that to buy HP cakes which restore 20 HP. We'll buy 8 of those plus 5 spinners for catching Pokemon. Our next battle is for this quest to take out this Beezle who's blocking this guy's way. And it is level 8 and we're only level 6 so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do this. Slam does a ton of damage. I'm going to get a crit attack which is very nice although we do get poisoned. I'm going to swap out Nibblegar for Potterbit and he might be able to finish this thing off. And Potterbit gets stung by beads which is super effective. Although Rage is not I think. A rage just increased his attack and Potterbit gets poisoned from attacking the Beezel. I guess the Beezel has an ability that poisons whoever attacks it. Let's try to finish it off with Slam if we can. We do finish it off. Very nice. Potterbit gets a level up and Nibblegar does as well. In the library we do the quest where you have to know a bunch of things about the game which you can just look up on Google. And the reward is supposed to be his hat but it turns into a fear disc which can attract already hurt Coromon if held by your leading squad member. And this is a really good item but since we have to run from every battle this does not help us at all. The second item we get for completing that challenge is the same reward as normal. This slot gem can be given to another Coromon and they'll get XP after every battle and does not lower the amount of XP the main Coromon gets from the battle. For a quest we have to take out 6 Beezle that are scattered around the town. We just fought a level 8 one and then Nibblegar and our other dude leveled up so this should be no problem. On Nibblegar's second attack a bleeding wound does open up on Beezle which is pretty lucky. And I think we should probably use the HP cake here instead of swapping out Nibblegar because if Nibblegar solos this he'll get way more XP and Potterbit will get half of that. Beezle used Rage and his attack increased firmly so he's going to start doing way more damage. Hopefully we can finish him off with 
Oh man, that's a lot of freaking damage. There's no way we can finish him off, right? Unless we use another HP cake. It might be worth it because right now we're struggling so hard on levels. And Beastle was stupid and used Venomous Beast, which does way less damage. I think it's a special attack. You can see his slam did so much. We do knock him out and get a whopping 254 XP, which is enough to get more HP, I think. And we do get a level up as well for two more HP and some other stats. And then Powder Bit also gets to increase some of his stats. This thing just really sucks, and I don't think I'm going to level it up more because it ends up having like a really high special attack and attack, which means its other stats will suffer. In my opinion, it's much better to specialize into a certain type of attack. I also don't think this thing has many special moves, but it gets really high special attack. Well, then again, once we evolve it, it's going to turn to something else that may scale with special attack. It's just, do we want something that has high special attack and attack? I don't think so. For now though, we'll just mash points and HP for it, and we'll keep it because it's our only other Pokemon. Onwards to the next Beazle. It's level 8 and we're level 8. I think we should do Bubble Burst so that we can attack first maybe, if we get the proc to lower its speed. We did not get the proc, it's only a 20% chance. I would actually like to get the Chomp proc probably more so. We get poison. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna actually be able to do this though without having a potion, which would be nice. Freaking Beazle with their poison though is kind of annoying. It's gonna be close, but I think we'll have the potion. We're gonna only have seven left after this, but I think it's worth it for that juicy solo XP. Beazle increases attack firmly, so he did not attack. He does there though. Ouch. He might one shot the Nibblegar. No, he does not. And we get the solo XP and our level up and Potter Bakes level up as well. Against the next Beazle, luck is on our side and we don't have to use any HP cakes. And off that battle, Nibblegar gets another level up. And the next one, we again don't have to use any healing cakes as I just spam Bubble Burst. And we get the proc to lower the Beazle's speed so we get an extra attack off. We take out Beazle number five with no problem and get another level up up to 11. And finally for Beazle number six, which is potent so it's higher quality. It's going to be a bit stronger than their Beezles, which is why I decided to fight it last. And it does start with a Rage, which is a little bit scary. Its attack increased by quite a bit. Our Bubble Burst did lower its speed though, so we're going to be able to attack first now. And it's using Venomous Bees, which I'm pretty sure does not scale off of attack. So that was pretty dumb to do. Slam hits hard, but not hard enough. And more Chomp should do it. And since this thing is potent, it's going to give us way more XP. 508 should definitely be a level up. Up to 12 now. And Powder Bit is up to 10. For doing the quest, this girl was supposed to give us a stinky disc to lower the chance that we get ambushed by wild Pokemon as we walk through the grass. But it turned into this magnet hat, which is quite stylish. It goes really well with our current hairstyle. When the hat actually does something, it attracts extra gold after defeating trainers? Are you kidding me? That's so good. Speaking of items, we've been looting some pretty good ones from random boxes on the ground. We've got the biggest combi cake, which restores all HP and SP. We definitely don't need that for a long time, so we'll just sell it. Then up here we got two XL SP cakes, which are just overkill. We're going to sell both of those. And down at the bottom we got a couple of Phoenix shards, which will revive a Coromon. We'll just sell both of those. As you progress in the game, you complete milestones, like win five battles. Every time we win five battles, we get 50 points. Train a Coromon to level 10. We've done that twice. Never mind, we actually don't get that twice. Discover 10 unique Coromon on that one as well. And we're almost at level 2. For the first reward, we get two small HP cakes. And I don't think these are random. So far, we looted four XP chips which I feel like is a lot. I think you get a couple for free but I do believe we looted two randomly. I see two trainers that we're about to battle and second thought before we activate the XP chip because it only lasts for 10 minutes. Make sure we have enough healing cakes but like three more and then it would be good to buy one of each of these things because they can remove conditions. No, the rest of our money will buy a few more spinners. And already we're right next to a trainer. We're going to activate the XP chip and we now get more XP for these battles. And do keep in mind while we're doing the dialogue and while we're doing the battle, the 10 minute timer is not going down. This guy actually is not a trainer with the fight. This guy definitely is though. And anyway, we wasted a couple seconds of the XP chip there, but that's completely fine. We do not want to capture a swarmy by the way. I think these things blow early on. If it was higher potency maybe, but yeah, we're just going to knock this thing out and right with the xp chip we only get 153 xp which is not that much but i guess for a swarmy that's quite a bit and while we got a shiny cub zero here it's potent his ice so it's going to be very effective against us but uh yeah we definitely want to capture this and i do think the safer play here is just to spam bubble burst because it's less effective and it doesn't have a chance to make the target bleed so yeah we'll just spam it it's not doing a crazy amount of damage and we'll have to use an hp cake here for sure a frost chomp is super effective okay we don't have any revive cakes as well and the x XP chip is going, so we definitely don't want to have to walk back to the town. On second thought, I think we'll just swap in the Potter bit because it doesn't take much damage from this thing. And I checked this guy's stats. 
slam does 40 damage and he only has 13 attack which is not much so this attack should not even kill it if it crits okay yeah the question now is do we start throwing spinners at it we do have an icy spinner that's more efficient at catching ice type Coromon. we'll toss that at it should work hopefully we got it let's go oh and it says shiny which i don't think means potent i think shiny is different from potent i think it's like super rare actually and it turns out shiny actually has nothing to do with a rarity it's a passive trait this will lower the opponent's special attack by one stage which is pretty good for catching a cormon we unlock another milestone and for each potent cormon we catch we get 20 more xp now that we're at milestone level two we get a thousand free gold and we gotta now keep it moving because our xp chip is currently ticking down this next trainer opens with a swarmy which shouldn't be too hard to take out off that battle and then book our gets a 13 and unlocks faint spurts which does quite a bit more damage 65 verse 40 with his old abilities the trainer sends out a digma which wouldn't actually be a bad pokemon to catch sand types take two times from water but 0.5 from electric sand and foul and the first mega boss is an electric boss it is just standard potential though and i feel like we can find a better one later i haven't gone into the specifics of how potential work but if something's potent it's at least got 70 potential and could go all the way up to 20 whereas if something's standard it could be the worst up to 16 so basically as long as something's potent you know that it's going to be better than most. Fain Spurts is double effect against the Digma so we use that. Nimblegar gets a whopping 1k xp for killing that thing. I also give the Slot Gem over to Cub Zero so he's now getting xp. And we're just going to leave Powder Bit in the dust. Oh and here we go. Nimblegar's evolving into an unknown water Coromon. And it gets to a stage 3 Chonk Toad so he's going to get a ton of stats. And you can see he gets a huge stat bonus for evolving to a stage 3. The problem with skipping stage 2 though is we don't get the stat bonuses for for evolving to a stage 2 Coromon. So that's kind of a good and a bad thing. Like it's going to give us a huge boost right now and we would have to wait a long time to be able to upgrade to a Chong Toad later. So fast forward quite a bit. Allowing Pokemon to evolve from stage 1 to stage 3 made the game way too easy. So when I do a future run when the game gets updated we're going to change that to disabled so evolutions are not random. And stage 1s will evolve into stage 2, stage 2 into stage 3. Trainer Coromon were randomly replaced with Coromon with similar stats. But in the future run I want to replace them with any Coromon so train could potentially be difficult. Also I want to make it so we can't heal at the trainer hub. We can only use potions to heal which is going to make it a lot harder to manage our money. Right now it feels way too easy. And speaking of healing, recover SP and HP on level up was way too easy. So we're going to turn those off. There's also this option where Coromon return to the wild when they faint and we could activate this but I feel like if your main Coromon does get knocked out then you pretty much just lose. But then again if you can capture a really powerful trainer Coromon then maybe that's fine. And if you guys do want to see another video on this with the updated settings when they release in their update just let me know by leaving a like